Welcome everybody to the Futurum Tech Podcast and Futurum Tech TV. I'm your host, Daniel Newman, Principal Analyst and Founding Partner at Futurum Research. Excited today for today's Futurum Tech Podcast interview series. I'm going to have a group of guests on following a big announcement in the 5G space. We're going to have guests from Qualcomm, US Cellular, and Nokia today to talk about a new world record hit on millimeter wave 5G. Uh, before I bring our guests onto the show, just quick uh, disclaimer on what's going on here. Um, this show is for information and entertainment purposes only. So while we will be talking about publicly traded companies and two publicly traded companies, please do not take anything I say here as investment advice, but do definitely listen as we do like to break and discuss some of the most important themes and updates and news across tech. And this is big news today. So without further ado, I'm gonna have our guests join and do a quick series of introductions before I get into the Q&A. So we've got Naratam from US Cellular. We've got Randy coming on from Nokia and we've got Gautam coming on from Qualcomm. So I'm gonna go around the horn. I'm gonna let you each quick, quickly introduce yourselves and then I will get right into the news and the questions. So Naratam, brought you on first. Go ahead and give us an introduction. Hello, my name is Narotam Saxena. I'm with US Seller, and I, I lead the technology strategy and architecture group. Great to have you on. Uh, Randy? Yeah, my name's Randy Cox. I'm part of Nokia, and uh, I'm in the product management team uh, working millimeter wave and small cells globally. Outstanding. Thanks for coming on, Randy. Narotam? Hi, uh, my name is Gautam. Um, I work for Qualcomm. I'm the product manager, uh, senior director of product management for fixed wireless access and the 5G modem portfolio here. Absolutely. Well, thanks all for joining. Like I said, you know, 5G is a big topic. It's uh, impacting all of our lives. A lot of us hear about it and know about it because of the devices that are carrying in our pockets and we're getting that little 5G uh, symbol lit up and it means, you know, faster connectivity, better experiences. But you know, there's a lot going on when it comes to 5G infrastructure uh, experiences going into, you know, fixed wireless access is going to be our topic today. Headline was essentially that Nokia, Qualcomm, US Cellular work together to hit an extended range 5G world record over millimeter wave. Now, a couple quick bullet points on this. Um, this successful milestone was achieved on US Cellular's production 5G millimeter wave network. It used uh, Nokia's 5G extended range millimeter wave solution and a 5G uh, CPE powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon X55 5G modem RF system with its QTM 527 millimeter wave antenna module. Whew. All right, that was a lot, uh, you know, had to read that one off because it was too many acronyms at one time. Now, there's a little bit of more details of what it was. Well, the new world record basically achieved what it's called near gigabit speeds at distances of approximately 10 kilometers, or as we like to say here in the US, six miles um, with high capacity, ultra low latency, um, which are the known benefits to a millimeter wave network. Um, and you know this is something that Nokia's solutions are going to enable to deliver to uh, these services to more regions and will be especially important as we start to push these out to more rural, less densely populated areas. Gentlemen, congratulations on the news. Always exciting to hear uh, you know, engineering and technology and innovation driving what is going to be a better experience for business and consumers. Uh, Naratam, I wanna start off with you and basically say, I've given my best assessment, but you guys I'm sure are jumping up and down. Why is this such big news for US Cellular? Sure, this is indeed an exciting news because if you go back a couple of years, uh, folks were talking in terms of few hundred meters or maybe less than a kilometer distance with millimeter wave. Today we are talking about distances of 10 kilometers. And this milestone really paves the way for carriers to bring 5G service using millimeter wave with massive capacity and low latency to even more regions across the United States. It will help close the digital uh, divide and what it does is the extended distances allows you to address the connectivity gap that exists today in the communities that are previously not serviced or they do not have an adequate internet connect connectivity. So we can provide our customers 
uh, the capabilities that millimeter wave brings with high performance and low latency 5g service and enhance their customer experience i would also say that us seller is collaborating with partners such as nokia qualcomm and others not just on proof of concept or trial in the production network but also making this extended millimeter wave range and its benefits commercially available to our customers, especially in the rural and underserved areas. So I'm really excited about this news. It sounds like really big news. Now you guys, as a, you know, as a carrier, what is this gonna change? What does this mean for your ability to, you know, impact product service? Uh, what's, gonna, what's gonna come from this from your cellular? Yeah, so I, uh, broadband access, AKA fixed wireless access, uh, delivering fast speeds on a cost-effective basis, uh, providing last mile access, especially in rural areas. Uh, I think that's the biggest benefit that we can provide to our customers. Another potential application that of this particular technology can be a point-to-point -point connectivity. So we are really excited about bringing this service to our customers and provide connectivity to the rural areas. Yeah, and I know you kind of said that as I initially hit you up, but I wanted you to reiterate that because a lot of times people listen and they blow right by it and it's like, all right, what's in it for me? You know, that's like one of those things you learn early in business school, that what's in it for me acronym. People always want to know, all right, this sounds really cool. It's going to be faster. Will I personally benefit? Will the experience change anything that happens for me on my device or in my office as I connect? And, you know, this rural uh, access, it's such a big deal. I mean, if you think about all the debates and discussions we're having around the country right now when it comes to infrastructure plans, for instance, this is, as I see it, what they should mean when they say infrastructure. And yes, I know a lot of us take it as things like roads and bridges, but keeping everyone connected and making it an equal playing field for people, despite, you know, what type of, um, you know, cell towers and connectivity and edges and clouds might be in a, in a region. This is a big deal. This is, you know, something that definitely needs to be discussed more. Now, um, you know, I guess I'd like to turn this over to uh, Gautam over at Qualcomm. You know, talk a little bit about the application, you know, that will, you know, ultimately benefit from, you know, this continued development of, of you know, the extended range millimeter wave. Yeah, you know, you guys touched on this a little bit. It's really about closing the digital divide, right? Uh, fiber is not available at a lot of places. How do you deliver fiber-like speeds to everybody who needs them? And I think cellular is a great way to deliver that. Now, why is millimeter wave specifically important for this? Is That is the spectrum band that has huge amount of spectrum resources that you could use to deliver gigabits of speeds i think for this demo we just showed about one gigabits uh, but we were operating over a spectrum range of 400 megahertz which is half the capability of our x55 modem to rf system so we could actually do more than that so you have the right band with huge amounts of uh, spectrum available to operators that gives them the capacity to really deliver gigabit speeds to people who don't have fiber who don't have connectivity and it could be residences it could be schools, hospitals, any kind of uh, rural infrastructure or suburban infrastructure. So I think the applications are endless. And, uh, and you know, we've been working together with the ecosystem, uh, US Cellular, Nokia, over the last year, year and a half, to stretch millimeter wave to 10 kilometers. I mean, that was our goal. And to really say that this is not a technolo technology that's limited to, say, two, three, 400 meters of distance. This could really be stretched. And... Um, so that's applications are endless, I would say. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and, and you know, uh, got some, I, you got to say what immediately comes to my mind is, 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 10 kilometer, is 10 kilometers the threshold now? I mean, we were talking early on hundreds of meters. We were talking about, you know, line of sights. We were talking about a lot of the limitations. And this was why sub six took mm -hmm. off faster early on. But we're seeing millimeter wave is definitely the technology that's driving the promise, the experience that everybody was expecting. Do you think it could go to 15? Could it go to 20? I mean, is there potential here or do you think you guys have hit the end of the line? I mean, we don't limit ourselves. I think we are continuously improving our technology. I mean, even on the base station, uh, Nokia is improving. So I'm sure we'll go further. But uh, 10 was the initial goal we set up, I think, with gigabit plus speed. So we are kind of there. 
Well, yeah, I would. I, I want to be careful about how I answer this because uh, how I answer this, Narotham will certainly be <laughs> calling me very quickly on how fast Let we can take down some notes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, no, I I would agree with Gotham. I, I don't think we should limit ourselves. But uh, having said that, I mean, this was a, we should be. Uh, we should sit on this and celebrate this right now before we look to the next one. But this is, um, we, we don't want to limit ourselves. So if we can do better, we, we're going to continue to strive to do that. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. You know, I'm the kind of parent that my kid brings home straight A's and, you know, I ask why they didn't get a higher A, you know. <laughs> so as an analyst, you just have to know I'm always going to be asking because, you know, I'm going to be talking to everybody in the marketplace and, you know, someone's going to come out and say we can do 10.1. I mean, that's yeah. just... That's just the reality of it. So I think your answer was correct, though. Keep pushing the bounds. You know, with every bit, you can stretch a little bit further and a little bit further. There's more benefit, but also it's it's density and quality. I mean, you don't want to just take it further. You want the quality to be there as well. And we all know if you're willing to degrade quality, you can always get a signal. I mean, but we all know what a one bar signal looks like. Just because you have it doesn't mean it's, it's any good. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, so, you know, let's let's build on this, um, you know, a little bit here. And, uh, you know, Randy, I'll keep it with you. You know, market leadership. I mean, I kind of just alluded to the fact that there is this leapfrogging effect. There's always one company or another that's going to come in and say, you did A, we did A plus work, whatever it is. What kind of market leadership opportunity does this news create? How hard will it be for others in the space that are competing with you to replicate uh, the work that you've just accomplished? Yeah, good question. Um, well, I do feel kind of like we did leapfrog because uh, we we've been working to do extended cell cell range for quite some time. And while we did make some progress, uh, our, you know, today commercially, uh, I, we're, we can achieve, you know, 1.2 kilometers from a commercial software perspective. And now we've we were looking to do two or four or seven. And actually, we in, in this particular um, demo and and trial, we achieved this 11 kilometers or 10 kilometers. Um, so I think uh, others will attempt this as well. And I, I think, uh, you know, we have very uh, respectful competition and uh, I have no doubt they'll be, able, they'll, they'll be able to achieve this as well. Having said that, I mean, we, um, there is, our specific algorithms that we pulled together in order to try to uh, to achieve. So uh, we'll we'll look to see how they do. Oh, absolutely. I mean, is it like uh, you know, there's kind of like traveling. What you know, everybody's trying to get to the moon now, and now we're all trying to get to Mars. So you know, I, 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 space exploration always makes for a great metaphor. But the, the kind of the point here is that you know, when it came to getting to the moon most of the chase was in getting there first. And then after that, it was just all about, can we even get there at all? I think yeah. when it comes to things like this, being there first in the market leadership, to me, reflects a lot about how committed you are to both R&D. You know, we like to couple R&D together, research and development. A lot of companies do development well, but very few companies do the research part well. That's why, you know, I've always admired a lot of the companies that are part of 3GPP, that are setting standards, that are involved in building next wave, because, this stuff is visionary and you work on it for decades and you don't start to monetize it until long after the investment is gone. So, you know, I, I have to say, you know, every time I see news like this, it makes me smile. Um, it's uh, it's a lot of work that you all have put into this and you probably deserve to, uh, you know, as Randy, as you suggested, to maybe celebrate, you know, uh, sit down, uh, put your feet up for a minute, but you only get a minute. And that's kind of me as an analyst. That's all I'm saying is you get a minute. But then I, I need you back to work because I know, you know, the next iterations and pushes are going to come out. So, you know, I guess I'll let it end on here in a quick uh, let's do a quick round the horn. But, you know, if this is a little fun, a, a little fun with the news. But, you know, and I'll, I'll start with you, Naratum, because you went first and then didn't get to talk again. But, uh, you know, one thing you really want the market to take away from this news, what would it be? It's uh, broadband connectivity to the rural America. That's what I would like, want to give this message because what this really enables is help close the digital divide that others mention about and uh, provide connectivity to underserved rural uh, America. And as a carrier, I'd say that's the perfect uh, that's the perfect uh, you know thing to pick, item to pick as your number one. Um, 
how, how about you, Gautam? What's your number one takeaway from the Qual through the Qualcomm lens? I would really say that you know wireless fiber with millimeter wave five G is kind of here now, right? It's available. It's available for customers to access and much faster rollout than any kind of dig digging trenches or any you know fixed fiber deployment. So it's, that's the takeaway here. Absolutely, and, and Randy, I, I'll give you the hard spot. Go last, but give uh, everyone out there, all the listeners, what's one thing that uh, you really want them to take away from this news? Well, what I would uh, want to make sure that everyone's clear on is, you know, you hear a lot in the news, uh, demos, trials, capabilities being being shouted. This is real. This is not, uh, you mentioned research. Uh, this is not just uh, research in the sense of a special capability that will not be able to be commercialized. Um, we're confident today that we're going to be able to take what we did in U.S. Cellular's network and we will be able to commercialize this. So while it's a great accomplishment and we love it, we're, we're ecstatic that we're able to do this, this is not just an experiment. This is a, I would say, even a pre-commercial capability that we've demonstrated. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's great. Uh, that's great insight. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and send you guys off to the green room here. I just want to thank all three of you, Naratam, Randy, Gautam. Thank you so much for joining me here on the uh, Future Tech podcast, the interview series. I almost forgot the name of my own show, and I've done like 200 of these, but very exciting stuff. I, I always love hearing this stuff. I always love being on the front edge of the big news, and you guys did a great job of breaking it down. I'm going to break it down for everybody really quickly. I'm going to leave you guys in the green room, but uh, I'll be back with you in just a minute. Okay. All right, everybody, you heard it here. You heard it here first on the Future Tech podcast, Future Tech TV. Love having all of these different companies, by the way, that, you know, these companies work collaboratively. And that's one of the great things about the tech ecosystem. You've got a carrier, you've got multiple companies that are heavily involved in the development and the deployment of infrastructure and, uh, you know, core technologies for each and every generation of new connectivity that's gone out in the marketplace. So thanks to all that attended and tuned in and looked at this. This is a really big deal. Um, you know, Neurotum said it really well. When you start to think about what this really means, you know, this connectivity is here, but rural areas are often much later to receive these levels of speed and connectivity. Bringing millimeter wave out to the rural communities, rural areas is going to level the playing field. It's a big move in the infrastructure space. It's something that we should and will be talking a lot more about. But for this episode of the Future in Tech podcast and Future in Tech TV, I gotta say goodbye right now. I wanna thank you all for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button. Check out all our other episodes. We have lots of them with all kinds of different executives, top leaders, thought leaders, and thinkers across tech. We here don't like to just give the news. We like to give the analysis and tell you what you need to know. But I got to say goodbye for now. We'll see you later.